Hi everyone, welcome to the quiz video for module three. Um, the goal here is that really you'll probably watch this video twice. Some recommendations before I get started is that if you need to pause the video to make notes or to work on a part of your quiz, please pause. Do the thing you need to do, take notes, work on the quiz, and then unpause and continue with the video. And a, a reminder that you're, you're watching this to preview before you take the quiz and also during the quiz. So, you know, uh, if you're taking the quiz now and you've already seen the video and you feel okay just doing the work based on the instructions, go for it. But the video is here to walk you through the quiz information as well. So my goal now is to do three things specifically, is to review academic essay structure with you and to show you the difference between a deductive argument and an inductive argument. So you're going to use this template. I've called it a template in the in the introduction video you also see that I call it an essay map up here and you're going to as for the quiz map out your rhetorical analysis and so I'm going to present to you the deductive argument I'm going to use um, fleeing the fleeing to the mountain by Christoph pretending that's my primary source for um, this one for the deductive excuse me for the deductive argument and for the inductive argument template or map I'm going to use um, Cameron Howard's rhetorical analysis in the textbook, kind of map that out. Um, so I have a lot to say really, really fast. Going to try to get this video under 10 minutes. So again, if I'm talking too fast and you need to pause to make notes or to jot something down in your quiz, please use that pause button um, because I am going to fly at this point. All right, so a deductive argument um, in an academic essay structure can have as many paragraphs as you want it to have. Um, don't limit yourself to five paragraphs, y'all. That five paragraph essay that we've written for years and years and years is so limiting. So you'll notice that the template has 10 paragraphs. Your rhetorical analysis only has to be three pages. Most students end up writing four to four and a half. So it's unlikely that you'll have 10 paragraphs, but I want to show you a longer essay template so that you can see how you could stretch out the essay. So a couple of things on academic structure. You know there's an introduction, a body, a conclusion. Notice that this document has two columns. First column has paragraphs one through five, second column paragraphs six through 10. They're also labeled intro, body, conclusion. Notice that this essay um, has two introduction paragraphs. So when you need to have a longer essay, you have to use the academic essay structure in a flexible way, have more than one intro, you all, you have to. This essay will have six body paragraphs and two conclusions. Let's go through the points really, really quickly. Um, so what's required in a rhetorical analysis in a deductive argumentative structure? You need your first secondary source. I've decided, I've decided as the writer, I wanted an intro paragraph one. It does not have to go there. These secondary sources can go anywhere, but I've decided to put it there. And I'm gonna say that I found some really applicable biography information about Christoph that I can tie to the writing he's doing in Fleeing to the Mountains. The next thing I'm going to do in paragraph one is a quick summary of the primary source. I have to give a summary of the primary source so that readers know what the essay is about before I start to analyze or critique it. This is a requirement. Mm, I don't know, two, four sentences. It's kind of up to you how long the summary is, but it should be quick. Body paragraph, excuse me, excuse me, wrong words, introduction paragraph number two. This is where I'm going to put my thesis, y'all. My thesis is going to be longer. It's going to be more than one sentence. I have a 10-paragraph essay, so I'm going to make sure my thesis is more than one sentence, and it's okay for that to happen. You may have been told many things about thesis statements, that they need to be in the intro as the first sentence, or the intro as the last sentence. Baloney. You can put it in the second paragraph, separate from that first introduction paragraph, and it can be longer than one sentence. All right, so now let's talk about the body paragraphs, y'all. And I got these ideas from you, from your fantastic discussion board posts. So I'm going to have many different topics for my body paragraphs, six different body paragraphs. Each one is going to talk about a rhetorical structure or style or device or um, appeal or something like that. Each paragraph will focus on something specific. Each body paragraph has a pattern, a really clear pattern, y'all. It tells what the paragraph is about. It gives examples from the primary source, and then you have to have some commentary. You have to explain what you see, what you understand about the examples. All right, so focus, examples, commentary. All the body paragraph 
paragraphs have that same structure. Let's go through the body paragraphs. Paragraph three will define the writer's purpose. Many of you did that on the discussion board. That would be a fantastic topic. Body paragraph four, use of pathos. Um, again, identify pathos, find examples of pathos. I can quote or paraphrase the examples and then some commentary to give some insight on what I believe that pathos does to the reader for the reader um, in the essay. Body paragraph five, I totally borrowed this idea from some great, great um, folks um, on the discussion board who combined genre with ethos or pathos. So to combine another writing strategy with an appeal would be a really cool thing to do in a body paragraph. Body paragraph six, I have this idea in the Christoph essay where the genres kind of intersect, where, they, where the anecdotes or the personal stories he tells kind of intersects with the um, political stances. I'm going to write about that in paragraph six. Body paragraph seven, same thing, except I'm going to switch to tone, where that essay shifts from one kind of writing to another, how the tone changes. Body paragraph eight is going to talk about how both of those things affect the reader. There's this sharp, unexpected change in the essay, and so I'll talk about the effect on the reader there. And then I move into my conclusion. Conclusion paragraph nine. Notice two conclusion paragraphs. I'm going to have a secondary source, my second one, and I'm going to try to, I hope, find an op-ed that Christoph has written on another topic and make a comparison between the two essays. And then paragraph 10 will be my conclusion. In a deductive argument, you are concluding by restating your thesis, and then I'm always going to ask you all to do something creative or something different in your conclusion, not just restate your thesis. So what I want to say about the deductive argument, y'all, is that... Um, You'll notice that your thesis comes early, it's clear, and it tells the reader the conclusions you have already made about the, about the source that you're going to try to prove in the body paragraphs. So it's thesis that already has a conclusion, you prove that, conclu all those, you prove that conclusion in your body paragraphs, and then you restate. That's pretty much how a deductive argument works. It's based on the idea of the syllogism, which means that you have made a couple of, decided on a couple of premises in your mind to get to that conclusion. And some, so sometimes those premises or those assumptions are not stated within your essay. We, we sort of just kind of understand implicitly what you're trying to do. That's how deductive argument works. Let's look at un inductive now because I would really love it if you would all try to think through the inductive and maybe even be attracted to it enough to want to do it. So this time I'm going to go through the same 10 paragraph template that I have here. Your job in a few minutes for the quiz is to write your own uh, in, in an outline or you can upload the file. The file is out in D2L so you can upload the file as well and it will be available to you in the quiz too. Um, I want to know how many paragraphs you have, um, how you'll write your intro, how you do your body paragraphs, how you do your conclusion and this is a proposal of sorts. It's not a for sure thing. It's not set in stone. You can change your mind, but helping you to move towards that draft. So that's what your quiz is about, that you're going to either type in the template slash outline or upload the file, whichever you prefer to do. So let's go through inductive argument. I'm going to probably go over just a little bit on that 10 minute mark for the video. So inductive arguments are about not making conclusions at the beginning. They're about examining uh, what you see in something, in an experiment, in an essay, um, and then making your conclusions after you've examined all of the things that you're looking at. So paragraph one will be my intro paragraph. Um, and remember, I'm now looking at Cameron Howard's essay for how he did it because he did write an inductive argument. So you'll notice that the whole first paragraph, the whole first intro paragraph is a personal anecdote where Cameron is trying to identify himself with Kristoff and he mostly uses first person in that first paragraph to say I also love the outdoors, I also spend a lot of time in the outdoors and I think what this paragraph does is it justifies, this is just my commentary right at this point, it justifies Cameron's use of the first person if he needs to say I again later in his essay it's justified now because he's identified himself as one of Christoph's readers. So I just want to make that point. The whole first paragraph is in first person and is sharing his connection with Christoph. Paragraph two is where Cameron Howard gives the summary 
of the primary source, and it's also where he identifies um, the essay as a type of argument. There's a, a word on page 121, y'all, epidiactic rhetoric. It's a kind of um, argumentative essay that either blames or gives praise. So he identifies um, Christoph's essay as this type, and he doesn't really define what it is, y'all, so he could have. That's one of my comments. Uh, it's a little bit of a flaw in Cameron's essay, but that's cool, whatever. He identifies it. He summarizes. There is no thesis in paragraph one or two. I want to point this out. He's given a focus, this epidiactic argument, but he has not given a thesis. So this is really a telling move. Um, in an inductive argument that there's no thesis, y'all, that there's a focus. But now we see that in the body paragraphs, it's an examination of what Cameron sees in the essay without a thesis in place in intro paragraphs one or two. Body paragraphs, let's fly through. Paragraph three is a body. This is where Cameron talks about Christoph's use of ethos. Paragraph body four, there happens to be a really nice transition there but mostly the paragraph focuses on use of evidence and style um, in Christoph's essay. Cameron then, in paragraph five, applies that reference to the epidiactic argument here, which is a really nice thing I wanna point out because if he had defined epidiactic argument, that would have been a secondary source, y'all. He can define like some rhetorical terms as a secondary source. So if he had defined it back in paragraph two, that would have been awesome. But in paragraph five, he ties that epidiactic argument back into the body, um, and there's a connection to the target or the intended audience there as well. Paragraph six focuses on the, the critique of the audiences that Cameron notices, and he's claiming that, you know, Christoph can't connect with um, a certain audience there, the uh, conservative political audience. And paragraph seven continues with the critique of the audience, saying there are other audiences that Christoph will never connect with because um, he is kind of biased and he has this privilege and he's not including other people into the argument. So these two paragraphs are both about audience, y'all, but, you know, he's focusing on different audiences, so he broke them out into two paragraphs. So that's paragraph seven, and that's the body. And then paragraph eight, he has only one conclusion paragraph, and you'll notice that his thesis is at the very, very end. But what I really like about the paragraph is that he talks a little bit about Christoph's um, practice uh, with writing op-ed essays and um, and that he probably does know how to address these other audiences so that his misconnection with some of these other audiences doesn't destroy the quality of the essays. Basically what he's saying there in the thesis is the very last sentence, y'all, because he's examined what he's seen in the essay and then decided what his conclusion is. So that's how the inductive argument works. All right, so I apologize so much for going over a few extra minutes, y'all. Your job now is to show me what your essay template is. Um, you can type it out, use the file that's available to you, and I'm so excited to see um, your ideas for how you're going to lay out your essay before you start writing your draft. Email me if you have questions. Have a great quiz experience. Talk to you later.